Hi, I'm Lawson with AM Performance Electronics and I'm here with Nate and Jason in this beautiful track prepped Acura Integra. This Acura Integra runs a Honda S300 V3 ECU and we're going to install our CD7 digital dash on it, show you how to make that connection right now. So the first thing we're going to do to get this all set up is we're going to remove our Honda equipped ECU out of the car. And we have our Honda digital wiring harness, which includes our can high, can low connections. And we've got a little electric screwdriver here to make our life a little bit easier. And we're going to go ahead and take the cover off and show you how everything's hooked up inside this ECU to the Honda unit itself. So now with the cover off, we have our Honda S300 uh, plug-in board for this particular ECU. And this one here is the one we're going to be concerned about for the CD7 installation. Uh, this is what they call their digital input-output connector. And this contains their can high and low uh, connections. We started with this Honda digital input-output cable. And we removed any of the unnecessary wires, leaving the pins in the connector. Uh, these pins act as a, a way to keep this connector uh, on the ECU uh, as kind of a retention system of sorts. So we cut all the ones out that we didn't need uh, and we left our pin 2 white wire which is can high, our pin 3 blue wire which is can low. That essentially plugs in here on this little connector here. I want to make sure that you get your orientation correct. It's easy to offset this one way or the other and not have your pins connected where they're supposed to go. We made sure we twisted our can wires. Uh, minimum one, in one twist per inch is required for can line because this unit does not have a terminating resistor. Uh, that's what this little bundle is here. We have a 120 ohm resistor that is jumped between the can high and can low wire and that allows us to effectively communicate with our CD7. Uh, once that's all done, we simply plug this back into this connector port here. We drill the hole in the side of the ECU. Uh, after putting our, our heat shrink cabling, our covering on the cabling, uh, we ran the cabling through this hole, sealed it up with some hot melt uh, to keep the elements out, and we ran it to a four pin Deutsch connector. The yellow wire that's on here was utilized for fuel level um, as the car has a, a converter module that outputs a zero to five volt analog signal that we then sent into the Honda, which it then sends out over its CAN bus network so that we can see that analog voltage on our CD7 and actually configure the CD7 to display fuel level. We're gonna go ahead and put this back into the car. So now we're going to take that cable that we've got coming out of the ECU and we've got our can high and low wiring here that we've already pre-ran in the car. We're just going to plug these in and so now we're ready to move on to the connections to the CD7 and our vehicle dynamics module. So now that we've got our, our cabling coming from our Honda to ECU through here, we've got our power and ground and our can high and low from the Honda device. Uh, one thing I wanted to note uh, before we go any further with this, uh, this vehicle previously had power and ground supplied uh, from a previous dash installation. In the event that you don't have power and ground available to you as easy as this vehicle does, we do offer a uh, power harness specifically designed for the CD7 uh, for non-AM net devices. In order to, to finish up these connections, we have our uh, CD7 connectors down here. We're simply gonna take the connectors from our VDM, plug one into another. We have our CAN2, which is our Honda a CAN. We're gonna plug that into itself and our power and ground is gonna go into the other connector from our VDM. So and the nice thing about these AM net cables 
is all the power and grounds and all the can, the AM net can is all spliced together. So you can plug any combination of AM net devices together. As long as you have power coming in from one source, that power is gonna get sent to every connected AM net device. So let's go ahead and plug everything in and see how this thing looks. So now we're all set up here, we're mounted, we're wired up. Now we can go ahead and hand this over to Nate and he can show us how to set everything up in the software and get this dash configured so we can see all of that data coming from that Honda ECU on this digital display here. Okay, now that Jason's wrapped up the install, I'm gonna show you how to configure a layout file uh, to load onto the dash to work with the Honda ECU. So we'll start by opening the dash design software. Now the file already opened, but let me show you how to open it from scratch. So we'll go File, Open. In the Dash Design directory, we need to open the Setups file, Generic. And we're going to open the AEM 5 gauge blank layout file. Select that, hit Open. Now the layout's open. Now the reason this layout is considered blank is that it has existing gauges. In this case, we have five gauges on this display screen here. Uh, they're there, but they're not assigned to anything. So if we open up the water temp gauge, you can see it has a name. It's called coolant temp, but there's no input. It's been left blank. Uh, there's no channel that it's assigned to. In order to get this uh, linked up with the correct channel, we need to import the CAN data for the Honda ECU, and these channels will automatically get linked up. So to set up the CAN data, we need to go to Setup, Display, can receive. Port 1 is for AEM net devices, and in this case, the car has a VDM on it, so we're getting our GPS data from the VDM for lap timing. We need to configure port 2, set the baud rate to 500, and turn the terminating resistor on. Uh, the rest of the settings can be left as they are. Go down to import can. In the dash design directory, we need to go to the can folder. Navigate down to the Han data file, S300V3. Open that up. Now here's our channel list. These are all the channels that are gonna get imported when we do this. We can expand this out and see all the individual channels. If there's any we don't want, we can deselect them. Presumably you'll want them all, so just leave them all checked and then click import. Now you can see all the raw import channels have been added. So those are there now. If we go into outputs, you'll see we now have a coolant temp channel, uh, all the analog voltage channels, battery volts, engine speed, all of that. So all that's now there. If we close that and go back into the layout file, we're gonna click on our coolant temp gauge and you'll see that coolant temp has now been correctly linked up with the coolant temp channel. Same thing for boost. We're looking at intake manifold air pressure. Now there may be an instance or two where the names are a little bit different. For instance, in AFR, it's actually looking for a name of AFR1, but the Honda sends AFR over as fuel air equivalence ratio. So that's the channel that needs to be linked to. Click OK. So what you need to do is then just go through the layout and make sure that all the gauges are correctly linked to the appropriate channels. Now every ECU is gonna have a slightly different uh, listing of channels they have available in their CAN data stream. Uh, so what you'll have to do if you're working with something besides the Honda is you may have to go through and change some of these channel names uh, in order to display channels that you have available. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is fast forward ahead, get these channels assigned, and get this layout file all wrapped up. Okay, I've gone ahead and gone through the layout. All the gauges and numeric readouts are correctly assigned to the appropriate channels, and the layout's ready to be saved and uploaded to the dash. But before we do that, I want to point out that the CD dash has two levels of driver notification. The first is a warning, which we have here at the bottom of screen one. This is a warning message. These are going to be less critical things. Now, if things get really critical, then we would actually have a higher level of driver notification, and that would trigger the alarm screen. So the alarm screen would then display on the dash itself. You get the red screen of death. Obviously that's a big problem. Something very critical has occurred and we need the driver to either stop the vehicle or shut the engine off or whatever the case may be. Now I've gone through and set up a demonstration on how these are gonna work. To do that, I went into display. 
Now for the warnings, I've gone down and created a test warning called Warning TPS. It's an alarm and its input is based on the throttle position. So the, this warning is going to be true anytime throttle position is greater than 50%. Now when this alarm is true, let's go into the bar trigger. When warning TPS is true, when it's 1, uh, because TPS is over 50%, that'll trigger the alarm bar. Then we also have a warning message. And the warning message is going to display what channel is currently causing the warning and also give its current value. So for the warning TPS channel, we're going to say warning demo and then reference the throttle position current value and display that here. So that's how the warnings get set up. Now for an alarm, I created an alarm channel called alarm TPS, set up as an alarm, referencing throttle position, and this is true whenever throttle position is greater than 85%. So if I put my foot to the floor, that'll make the alarm page screen display. Now to assign the alarm page, you go set up alarm page, and then you check which alarm you want to trigger the alarm screen. In this case, we want alarm TPS. So now that I've gone through all these steps and shown you how to set up the layout file to work with the Hondata ECU, uh, what I've effectively done is actually created a layout file that's ready to be loaded. So what we'll do is actually save this file and make it available on our forum. So instead of having to go through step by step and do this yourself, you can just load this pre-configured file and you'll be ready to go. So we'll go ahead and save this, head down to the car and load it onto the dash. Okay, so now we're down to the car. Uh, Jason finished up the installation, all the wiring's done. Um, we just went through setting up the file, so we're ready to load it. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, power on the car. Get the dash powered up. We've got our default file loaded now. So we'll open up the laptop, open up our dash design software, go file, open. Find our Hondata layout file. Go ahead and open that up. All right, now all we need to do is plug in the USB cable. Okay, now we're connected with the dash. We can go file, upload the dash, or the keyboard shortcut is Control U. So we'll get this going. And now we're clear to disconnect. Okay, so the dash reboots. Now the one thing we will need to do is actually uh, power cycle the car. Uh, in order to get the ECU to reset and start transmitting the data over CAN. All right, so as you can see, we've success successfully loaded our layout onto the dash. We're gonna run through the different pages here. Second page third page of our lap timing info. It's actually counting up right now. Let's reset that. There we go. And our fourth page, the diagnostic page. So from here, now we're ready to start the engine and uh, go out and drive the vehicle. Okay, we've got the layout all loaded, and I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the difference between a warning and an alarm. So warning being the lower level of alarm, and then alarm being the higher level, which will trigger the alarm page. So to demonstrate that, uh, we're in the car, the layout's loaded, everything's on. I'm gonna go ahead and just roll into the throttle, and when I get above 50%, you'll see that the bottom warning bar has been triggered, and the text is now indicating that we're in a warning mode. If I come back off the throttle, go below 50%, that turns off. And you'll see that we have get that same warning on each page. On the third page, the warning bar is at the top. And then on the fourth page, the diagnostic page, it's down at the bottom. We get red text. So beyond the warning, we have our 
alarm. Now, if our alarm, again, for the throttle was to go above 85%, so if I put my foot to the floor, you see now we've triggered the alarm page. With the alarm page triggered, I can actually come off the throttle again, but the alarm page latches. So at this point, the driver has to make a decision. Uh, do I stop the vehicle? Do I shut the engine off? Or can I choose to ignore this and actually clear the alarm and continue going? Thanks for watching our video. Let us know what you think in the comments section below and tell us what other product videos you'd like us to make. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel, AM Power TV.